So I want to start by welcoming everyone who has made it into this meeting. And uh, the simple agenda is that we need to understand what AI can do for us as architects, as uh, engineers. As, uh, meanwhile, people will be knocking on that door. Don't get tired of them knocking on that door and uh, we will open for them. Okay. And after this recording, I'm going to leave a link uh, to this to the WhatsApp group from where you guys have have been, such that many more people who want who are interested can join us. So that link will be in the video description. So right now, um, I want to talk about the things that we need to address before we leave because the agenda is important for a meeting like this one is to know what ai can do for us and uh, two is how can we position ourselves eh, in this ai space what can we do and uh, next is what things are, are required of us like if i'm to produce such images that i'm seeing on the page of uh, joseph dare some interesting things uh what how can i approach it what first of all which machines do i need what do i need just a smartphone do i need a laptop and if a laptop what capacity should it have and then also we need to to understand uh, how 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 can you prompt a computer to allow you achieve something like that yep so i think i'll keep using a shortcut do i have a shortcut to go and admi admit some people yes i think i have a shortcut all right so we are saying we need to understand what prompts we need to use in order to uh, achieve such a look such a cinematic look i can see some vignetting in here i can he will talk to us about some of these things that are being seen in this picture and how you can achieve them and then as well uh, we need to understand uh, what prompts are accepted in dali e because i have tried to prompt dali 3 and some some of my prompts get get blocked so what things do i have to watch out for when i'm prompting such that i am not blocked and i'm able to achieve the look that i'm going for and also we need to understand uh, to look at sample prompts of what he has done before and in case he has any resources he can let us know where to find him uh, what to, uh, what to do next uh, in case we are interested in in uh, achieving such things and uh, finally we need to also talk about the future of ai for architects what do you think it's going to look like if we continue like this because uh four months five months ago this page was not there for uh joseph dare but today we are talking about it so wh what do you think like a year from now what will it be lo look like so i think that those are a few things that we can look at add to today and more in case any of of more things arise um but at this moment i want him to come and introduce himself uh, such that people around here may get to know him you're welcome joseph all right all right good evening everyone good evening. my name is uh joseph uh Alan, as uh, Helia introduced me, I'm an architect in, here in Nigeria. I graduated from the university about five years ago. That was in uh, 2019. Uh, and also, one of uh, I've been using Archicad that uh, Alan also uses, and. Uh, the advent of AI is really a game changer for the AEC industry because apart from uh, it being able to generate images and uh, renders like this, cinematic views of your work, it has other things it can do. Apart from this, you can use it for assessment of your bill of quantity, 
uh, some of your design works, you can send your works to it, tell it to give you an assessment of the work, what is missing, even your own personally designed 3D models that you've done. It can do that. And it's even beyond that here, it's, it's beyond the now. We have what we call virtual reality, augmented reality, whereby you can just uh, paste, uh, you can scan uh, a QR code on a drawing, your drawing that you have, and then it gives you a life, real life view, augmented reality of your model in real life from the floor plan that is in front of you. So there are various uh, uses of AI in the AC industry. You have uh, platforms like uh, Graphisoft for Archicad, which recently they started, uh, they introduced the uh, AI visualizer for Archicad. And we have platforms like, uh, like uh, Veras, uh, Evolve Lab, that introduced Veras, uh, which a lot of people, and uh, I also use, use it in conjunction with Stable, with uh, Revit, SketchUp, uh, and a whole lot of other platforms. So what are the possibilities uh, of uh, AI and uh, what it can do for you? But today we'll not, not be really going into that possibilities. I would just like to introduce you to dal e 3 uh, dal e 3 is an image generator for architects what it does for architects, for other people, but we'll be looking at the architecture part, basically the interiors and the exteriors of uh, buildings. What it does is that you put in your prompts, uh, it's in conjunction. On Open hey, hey, it's paid for, but on Bing Image Create, you can actually have access to it free of charge with, uh, Dala, with GPT-4 instead of going to open hey high to pay. You have access to it free of charge. I'm going to teach you how to do that, how to get access to it. You don't have to uh, go and pay for it on uh, Bing uh, Create. Apart from the Bing Create, there are also other platforms that have it. Later during the class, when we are going to be holding an advanced class, I'm going to, we are going to be sharing that and we are going to be using other apps other platforms in conjunction with Dalhi that gives us a, a more accurate when you do your work, when you model your work uh, in uh, in uh, auto, in Archicad, then you can bring in into those, they are like render engines. They save time like normal, mod, they save time on like normal render engine like Lumion, like Handscape, or, uh, or Corona render that is attached to 3D Max that takes a whole lot of time and you have to be adjusting settings. Within a split second, you can get uh, what you want. So uh, enough of uh, so much. Let's just go into that heat theory. Uh, one of the things that heat theory doesn't allow obscene words. It, it, uh, when it notices that you are trying to copyright infringement of uh, some people's work, maybe some well-known works, and then you are putting details or dimensions of spaces, accurate dimensions, it might, it will flag it. Obscene words, uh, you know what obscene words are, naked, if you are using it for other things not related to design or it flags it. So uh, I would uh, like to share my screen. From here, so I would uh, ask if Alan can uh, stop sharing, so I can share my. I don't know if everyone can see my screen. Alan, can you see my screen? Hello, Alan. If you can see my screen, please just give me a thumbs up. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. You can see my screen. All right, then. All right. So uh, I'm going to be using my phone today, but I will, so I will uh, advise for better clarity that we always uh, use uh, our laptop and for easier working environment. 
if you are going to be using your phone you have to have a really good phone at least six to eight gig dedicate a, a ram for your phone so it's advisable to have a, your phone needs to have that capacity to enjoy its usage okay so when you open the app the bing uh, the dash history uh, on bing Inc. Image creator, this is how the screen looks like. This is how it looks like. So, Harlan, if you are there, just let me know if you can hear me before I proceed. I would like to get a voice response from Harlan, not just a thumbs up. Hello, Alan. All right, all right then. All right, all right. So uh, this is how it looks like. For example, let's start with. Uh, we'll be starting with the basic spaces we can have in a residential home. Uh, for example, a in an exterior facade. Let's just put that an exterior facade of a contemporary theory bedroom. Instruction we gave to it. So below here you have a we have the explore ideas that was where we had before. At the site you have your create. So it's, it has created, look at what it's giving us because we are just vague with our prompt. If you, if you notice, we told it our of a consumer bungalow. Please just be patient. Let's look at the first one, the second one. So we've seen the bungalow. Looking at other things. So uh, I believe everyone can see it now. If you look at uh, the first image, it's really a bungalow. It's not a bungalow. So you have to be really detailed uh, with your prompt to get exactly what you need. Now, uh, let's go. We'll be doing... a foyer, an interior design, an interior ah. the result, sorry.
in A. So it's creating, we just wait for it to create. Now, because we just those are the things, the details we look. These are what it can give us. You can see the foyer. Now things like light positions, chairs, the type of architecture, the furnitures in the space, the position of windows. We never stated it here. We just gave it a direct answer. So that's why you see there are a lot of change. There are almost similar, but they are different. So it gives you four different images anytime you prompt. Those are what it gives us. So I would like to move from this space. Uh, I don't know if uh, everyone is still hearing me so that I can know because I'm using my phone. So I would like a thumbs up again. Uh, so I can know if everyone is still with me. All right, thank you everybody. So I'm going back to the bin create, I'll be going back there now. Now, I'm going back there. Now, so another thing we'll be looking at, I'll be removing the word foyer, I'll be changing it into a living room. Living room. So I'm clicking on create again, you will see what it gives us. Yeah, if you notice, I'm not stating materials, I'm not stating all those things, I'm just giving something direct. If there's a way you can arrange your prompt and the process of works, which is so much. That's why I'm saying the next class, I'll have to use my laptop so that you can see a bigger screen. And now that works. Now, this is the result that's giving us how a living room should look like in a three bedroom bungalow. This is just the basics. You have not stated the type. It's just giving you a general overview of what uh, such a space should look like a general overview of that space. Okay, so uh, you can all see the living room now, I believe so. So this is the living room, the first image. If you look at it, they are different. Why? Because we didn't specifically state the positions of things. It just gave us uh, how a living room should look like on a normal situation. You just pick things, general overview, the, the type of furniture and the rest. So we can see the result it's given to us. From the results, we can see it's just different types of style. On the first one, it uh, is a contemporary design, but if you look at the positions of the windows, they are different. Uh, the second one, the position is also different, the chandelier is different from this other one. A bungalow from outside because big, we are just general in our explanation. We are general. Yes. Uh, anyone who has questions, by the way, uh, so far, for what we have already seen. I want uh, people to come in and uh, uh, say the things that they want to say and uh, comment on what you hello mr alan i'm with you yes you can hear me yes 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 that's what i was Some saying people, but uh, i needed to hear yes there's a hand here yes you please go ahead hello everyone okay I was requesting to know, uh, for example, I've done my project and, and I actually want to do a render with the with the, with the with the with the Dell three. How would I how would I import my my project to to Dell to Dell three when I'm using Archicad? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now that's a. Uh... 
we might not be able to have we lost him to uh to a gpt that analyzes what it's seeing when it analyzes it we we'll attach uh a view of your image to it and then we we'll, it gives us a, a rendered version of your image that he now that's why i've said we'll be using it in conjunction with other platform at the stage in which that he is now it's at the conceptual stage for architects and interior designs at the conceptual stage for architects and interior design but there are yes. other platforms just to interject a little that, bit um, okay sorry uh so when you're talking about um conceptual stage for me that doesn't look like a concept stage it looks like a final finished product or something like that so what do you mean when it's you okay. say that uh, dali is being used for uh, developing concepts now and then also we have another hand now, you can go ahead and answer that design, a full design now what what I, what I mean by concept is now you have your full design you want exactly the way your design to look like are you with me mr alan yes i am you want it to look exactly like this not what it's giving you so now if you go to your client and then your client comes and then uh your clients okay take the measurement of this space this is my project i want to do an interior design of this space now when you've taken that, you've modeled your work uh, in HackyCAD, you've done, you are done with your work. Now that he will give you a conceptual understanding, a close image to what your project will look like. There are other stable platforms, which I also use. Sometimes I just use them. I don't note it on the, on the platform that, it's, that I use them, that we will be looking at. Also that we have like look hex, I'll be mentioning them is two we will be using for the advanced class, look hex and uh and veras.ai. Look hex and veras.ai. Veras, it's paid for. While look hex, they are doing their beta testing. It's basically for architects. It's free for everyone now. I know in the future you might have to pay a certain amount to have access to it. Uh, Dal E3, it's very okay if it's just a single piece. Maybe it's a furniture you are trying to model. A furniture. I don't know if you are with me. You want to model a furniture and you have an idea of that furniture. If you are very detailed with that furniture, Dal E will give you exactly what you want. But when it comes to a full O space, it's still at the conceptual stage. That is what I mean by that. All right. We have a hand, Francis. Please go ahead. Yes, Francis, you want to unmute or to put down the hand in case you don't have uh, anything you wanted to say. So I think you can proceed, uh, Dari. All right, all right then. So uh, let me go back to the DAL E3, the Bing Image Create. Mm -hmm platform i'm going back there now now we have our this is our FOIA. we've worked for FOIA. we've worked for the exterior we've worked for the living room so now for example we just put in for a toilet so uh the the uh advantage that hey hi has is that it we it saves time Imagine now you want to meet a client and a client needs to see some spaces. It's giving you a short time. You can just quickly do something to show the client. Okay, this is what I have in mind, like a mood board. That is where Dali is at now for architects and interior designers. Okay, this is how your space will look like. This is the idea I have in my mind. And we can achieve something like this for you. So now we are looking at an interior design of a toilet 
or yes, a toilet in a contemporary, a single a toilet in a contemporary three bedroom bungalow. So it's creating. Now you can see because uh, we are just direct with our words. Look at the toilet. This is the toilet space. Uh, look at the shower at the back. Look at uh, the wash area, uh, the, the cubicle and the wash hand basin by the left hand side. Now, if you are using it for a very detailed conceptual work, there's a way in which you can arrange your prompt that give you exactly 85% close to what you want. It's, you have to be very detailed with your uh, concept, with your prompt arrangement. Those are the things we'll be teaching how to get that detailed and very close to what you want. That uh, on some situations, if it's not a big house, if it's not a big house, you don't sometimes might not even, even have to design a, a building if it's for a proposal, you can have exactly what you want. You don't have to model all the spaces in the building. So uh, this is this is it. This is the toilet. So uh, for us to have a closer view, I'm going to put a uh, shower area of a shower area in a bathroom. In a contemporary three bedroom bungalow. These are just basic prompts for beginners so that we have a basic understanding of how it works. Now you can see that it's showing us more detailed view of what is in the bathroom. You see the shower area, you see the soap base inside. You can see the glass, it's showing that there's a glass there. Unlike earlier, also same thing on this image. It's showing the stand, the base for the shower, the shower base, the glass cubicles. The same thing here also. So that's how it works. So now I would like to go to a, one of the very, very important places in the house, which is the kitchen. I know uh, it's very important for horse architects and uh, majorly for women and horse as men, the kitchen is very important of a kitchen. So we are going to create something. So it's going to give us a general overview of how a kitchen should look like. Because we are not specific with which type of a kitchen that we want. We are just stating kitchen direct. Uh, a direct kitchen, uh, interior design of a kitchen in a contemporary three bedroom bungalow. Now you can see the kitchen with the work table and our three stools. Uh, it's an open kitchen, it's giving us kitchen with the uh, see the gas cooker, the dining area, the kitchen zinc the cabinet, the glass covered uh, top hung cabinet and the extractor. 
uh, look at this also the last image for the kitchen even as a chair uh, for breakfast like a, a highland table for breakfast in the kitchen cabinet it's adding it's an open design is a contemporary one that's why it's showing us a view from outside because of the word contemporary Uh, so, after explaining, I'm with you. I'm with you, Mr. Alan. Yes. Should I go ahead or you can continue? Go, go ahead. Go ahead. So I am noticing a pattern of uh, using a keyword, which is contemporary design. So yes. it's uh, w whenever you enter in a space, like a kitchen, a bathroom, a sh whatever it might be, a living room, and you add a keyword contemporary, it starts to give you some of these uh, modern looking designs. Yeah, yes, modern looking space, yes. Okay, okay, that's a good, a good thing for uh, anyone who is watching or anyone who uh, hasn't yet begun you can try this yourself you can see we are using a, just a smartphone but we are able to create something okay. like this so so another thing now uh, because of your question now so what i'm going to be changing this to to uh neoclassic neoclassic or vintage let me change it to vintage vintage three bedroom yes so that we'll see the difference so it understands uh, the various types of design now mr alan yes please are you there now i don't know if you can see my screen if you look at the type of style See that is now looking vintage. Oh, okay. Like, I can uh, see. Uh, because the type of furniture that is being created. I don't know if you notice the changes. And Look at the ceiling. You can. Yes. I'm going to. So, uh, if you can look at it. This is what it's giving us. You can see the positions of the bed head, positions of the bed head, the, the bed sheets, the type of bed is dropping through pillows on the floor. And because of what we specifically So I'm trying to load in uh, the images of the bedroom. Uh, so uh, I'll go back to the class so that I can hear from us. I can hear you. Anybody else who can? All right. All right, then. So uh, is there a question? So today we have uh, seen a few key, so far. Uh, key, key words that you can use when you're prompting. So for those who have missed, uh, we saw that when you add a word, like a style of architecture, like contemporary architecture, then it will bias to a certain style, which is more modern, and uh, even the furniture, the building. Mr. Mr. Alan, I didn't hear you. You can hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, yes. So I'm uh, trying to explain, just to distill the, what we have been doing in a few, for those who have not been able to be with us. So I was trying to say that uh, we have a few 
key words that actually drive most of the outcome of the image. And you have seen your voice that, is um, breaking from you. Yeah? I don't know. Is 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 my voice clear for everyone else? Yes, the rest are hearing me. I don't know. I think the challenge is that uh, you're using the smartphone as well because uh, AI is also intensive in terms of data consumption. I I hope you you you're not breaking. But nevertheless, I'm trying to say that uh, we have a few words that you can include in your prompts that can help you create the architecture that you're going for. For example, we looked at contemporary. When you add a contemporary style, it doesn't matter what space that you add in, it will give a contemporary look to your design. And then if you add neoclassic, we have seen vintage kind of imaging. So depending on the uh, style of architecture that you append to your prompt, it your image starts to have a certain feel. Uh, when I look at the images that you have made before, Dari, Joseph, uh, there are, there's a certain feel to them. I feel like there might be something more that you add to them? Is it that you add uh, African style? Is it that you add colorful? What kind of thing that you, 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 you play with such that you get the look that you get for anyone here listening such that uh, they can try something like that. And then in case they want to develop what they are doing, they can come and uh, get, uh, get to talk to you. Meanwhile, as you're typing your prompt, uh, it would be nice if we can hear, as you say, to say it, what you mean by retro minimalist, by what you mean by Close capture, does that talk about the camera positioning? Does it talk about the, uh, just uh, okay, your thinking? Okay then. Because so, what we want to capture is so your thinking. I'm writing a close capture. I want a closer view of each of the spaces. A closer view of each of the spaces and a retro minimalist. It's a type of architecture mixing hold with new. That's what I mean by retro minimalist. When I say suitable for a global magazine, I want the result to be really good. That's what I mean by that. Very interesting. Of, mm -hmm. of a living room in Lagos, Nigeria, for example. Lagos, Nigeria. I'm going to be using vintage furnitures. Vintage. Mahogany redwood. Mahogany redwood. Uh, I will also be adding a, a black and white background, a black, a black and red and white. White background. A small, a large window by the left, a large window by the left. It's look like, it looks like you missed window. You can add it. All right, sorry. 
a large window by the left, a TV console at the a TV console. A center table a center table chandeliers on the in the ceiling. I'm going to add one last thing. And the layers in the ceiling, a fluffy rug, a fluffy rug, uh, play with light and shadows, light and shadows. So I'm going to be eating uh, the create buttons and then uh, the reason why this is like this, because I want a specific type and we are going to see the results. So, Mr. Haaland, everybody? Yes, yes, I can see. Now, so this is a... See, one of the advantage of that heat theory is its adherence to instruction. It adheres to instruction that it gives it, it adheres. If I've asked it uh, to, for a particular position of uh, the, the TV, it would have put it there. But because I didn't state the, the position of the TV, that's why you see it's uh, leaving it this way. If you look at the design, it's mixing the old and the new. Look at the coffee table. Oh yeah. That's the center. The fluffy rug is in place. and So basically, if you want to really get something out of uh, Dahi, for a starter, you need to state uh, all these prompts in a way that would uh, make you get uh, uh, something very close to what you want, very close. But uh, I know it looks cumbersome thinking of, okay, this type of wood, uh, the TV console, tables, chandeliers, a fluffy rock, play with light and shadows. I'll teach us a way in which uh, we can, if you have a project, how we can start the project, how we can get our ideas using Hey Hi, how you can get this prompt. You don't have to think of this so much prompt. If it gives you the prompt, you just have to edit, do a little editing. And then how that works is one of the things we'll be teaching later in the class. This is just uh, a basic introduction. For us uh, to have uh, a look, a view of uh, the possibilities of uh, that heat theory. So I will. I think it's high time I hand over to Mr. Alan. Well, thank you very much. I think uh, everyone here has seen how they can approach the take on archi on archi on uh, architecture with AI. Uh, some of the things that you have talked about are really interesting. Uh, the fact that AI has a very high capability, but it cannot do anything unless you instruct it what to do. So it is up to yeah. us to be as specific as possible. If we want to achieve a certain thing or a certain look, a certain style, 
and uh, also combine some interesting things and you see what happens to the final image. Uh, now I'm going to welcome a few questions if anyone has any. And uh, from there we can uh, conclude the chat later. Yes, anyone who is, uh, wants to say something or ask a question. Yes, go ahead. Well, thank you very much, Alan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Well, my question is that, uh, can you go as well, be more specific on the dimensions of something you'd want? Like even put in the dimensions of exactly what you want, or oh, that is uh, not very applicable. Now, uh, in relation to dimensions, it will give you a close to what you want, but presently it is, uh, it is, I will call it still on the 50%, 50%. You, you, you cannot, you don't give it dimensions, you can give it sizes, description of sizes. Now, maybe it's a small apartment. It works with sizes, a big luxury apartment, or an HDB house, a small space, a living room in a small space, small unit type of house, apartment houses. So it gives you, uh, it works with a description of words. If you'll be using Heihai with uh, HackyCard because your images from HackyCard that you've, uh, for example, we have the Maxon render on HackyCard. When you've used the Maxon render to get, or maybe the sketch, the model sketch, there's a, there are some platforms that we'll be looking at in the class later that you can carry those your images that you have there and take it over to those platforms and it gives you a rendered view in relation to your model so that you have an exact rendered view of your model we don't, without having to go to other platforms for renders. I, I believe I Martin, should have been able to answer part of your question. Martin. I hope your question was answered, Cohen. Um, yeah, you you talk about you need to talk about the relationship. You say maybe a big chair against a small something. So so AI knows what you're talking about. But specificity, the details, I have also tried, and uh, it's not yet good with detailing. I hope that's that's clear. Any other who has a question? Want to hear from uh, those people who joined us later? Did you manage to capture any of the value in the meeting? What 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 stood out for you, or any comments before we go to the final section, which is talking about the future of AI? Okay, if anyone, uh, if no one is uh, raising up their hand, so we can go ahead and you tell us, Joseph, yeah, maybe in a year from now, uh, because a few people were wondering, why is AI doing the final thing? We want AI to automate the boring stuff, the, the working drawings, the what, but it is going to the interesting yeah. creative work. So. What, oh, what do okay, you okay, see great, the future looks like? Okay. Okay. So uh, there are some hubs now, the AI platforms, that actually you can do floor plans with. Your floor plans, you arrange your floor plans. It gives you accurate dimensions. You don't have to go to your normal contemporary platforms. You arrange your, your floor plans. When you arrange it, it's... You drop your furniture in, the boring uh, stuff. You don't have to be thinking too much. And then you can have a view of it within seconds, unlike uh, the contemporary way. You have to be modeling. 
each and every platform. There's an AI platform which I'm still trying to pay for. I've not been able to reach. It actually does work in drawing for you. I don't know if you are with me, Alan. It does work in drawing. They were advertising it on LinkedIn uh, a few days ago on a group that I belong to on LinkedIn. Hello, Alan. Yes, yes, I yes, I meet you. So I think, okay. um, I think we just need to uh, uh, press Graphisoft to to bring such a thing to Archicad, so we don't have to hustle with working drawings. Uh, I don't know if there are any of, of the people who who might be able to petition for such a thing because um, people want to 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 have the boring tasks automated so we can focus on the creative stuff all right thank okay. you so, so much I, I don't know how, uh, yes maybe me and you later will talk there's a function on archicad but we'll talk about it later you are the expert i don't I definitely would have shared it on your youtube but i will i will talk about it later that does a bit of working drawing part for you automation of your dimensions stuff like that All right. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Uh, we look forward to the next class. I'm going to be communicating with Mr. Hallan uh, when the next class is going to be and how the modalities of the next class will look like for people that are interested in going further deep into the use of AI. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you everyone for joining in. Uh, see you next time. Have a wonderful evening.